The calendar block allows you to show tasks, events, appointments, campaigns in a calendar format. This block is available on professional and business plans with Softer. Now we're gonna use the content calendar template, which is found in the Softer library. You can copy it into your studio and follow along for free. So jumping right in, we always wanna start with a strong database. So for this tutorial, we're gonna use this content calendar Airtable base that comes with this template. In this base, we have four main tables of information content pipeline, which showcases each piece of individual content, information about that content, who the owner is, and more. Campaigns, showing upcoming and planned campaigns, their managers, creators, budgets, and more. Results, going into the results of each campaign with relevant metrics. And of course, a user's table, which every software app that's going to have user capabilities should have a user's table. So you can give access to your app, giving various permissions based off of say a user status, which here you can see is campaign manager or content manager or team manager. For this tutorial, we are going to recreate this content pipeline calendar while adding a few additional capabilities. For this use case, I want to show a calendar that shows all posts that are approved and when they're scheduled to go live, so similar to like a social media scheduler. Additionally, I want to show more information about that content with the option to link to a list details or modal pop-up. And then I want to add an additional calendar view that shows only the logged in users, upcoming content pipeline, and their respective due dates. So. Let's get started. I'm actually just gonna use this calendar as my base. And as with many of our dynamic blocks, you're gonna connect your data source, which for this template is Airtable, your Airtable base, which is content calendar by Softer, and the Airtable table. Remember, we want to create a calendar view of the content pipeline. So we're gonna connect the Airtable table as content pipeline. Next up, we're gonna create a simple conditional filter. Remember, we want this first calendar to showcase all the content that's already been approved and is set to scheduled, as well as their posting date, which would be referenced here. So if we hop back over to conditional filters, let's just add a simple conditional filter that says status is, and we want it to be scheduled, meaning it's on the calendar and it's ready to go. So we will just type in scheduled, make sure it is case sensitive, and there we go. So let's take a quick peek. Great, we're seeing three of three scheduled posts that are upcoming in February. Now, of course, because we've already used the calendar that was set up with this template, our item fields are actually already mapped, but let's go through the features tab to see what individual settings you have for the calendar. So first up, you have the title and subtitle. So let's call the title of this ready to post. And we'll say, this is a list of all posts that are planned and their respective due dates or posting dates, let's say. Great. So let's actually skip over filters for just a moment and head down to calendar settings. So first up, we have date format in data source. So for us, we have 2-10-2023. That's a US format showing February 10th of 2023. So let's map that correctly. Great. You can also choose if you wanna start the day of the week on Sunday or Monday. I'm gonna keep it to Monday. Additionally, you have different calendar views that are the default. So if you automatically want to show the month, then you can choose that here or the day or the week. Additionally, note that users can toggle between whichever one they prefer when they are on the calendar block. Then you have the option to map the event title, which makes sense that it's going to be the event name, or in this case, not necessarily an event, but content piece. Next for start date and end date, we're gonna choose the same field as we're showcasing the day this content will be posted, similar to how a social media scheduler would showcase. So for the start date, we're actually going to choose, instead of due date, we're gonna choose posting date because due date is correlated to when the content creator needs to have the content done by. Posting date is when this content will go live on social media or email, whatever your schedule is. So let's pop back over and change due date to posting date. 
And again, posting date as the end date. Great, so now as you can see here, Beach Essentials is gonna be posting on the 15th. Yep, that's correct. And let's do another one. Poolside Views is going to be posted on the 16th. Great. Now for color, you can use this in many ways, but we will pull from the color field here in Airtable that's actually under the Users table. But you can also use colors to specify status, platform, or a number of things. But for this calendar, the color corresponds with the individual content creators and which content pieces they're responsible for. To specify a color, you need to use a single select field as shown here. And the values need to be either specified as text, such as brown, this should be blue, <laughs> or red, for example. Or you can use the hex equivalent of the preferred color, which is my preferred choice because you have more control over the outcome. You can just use a simple hex code picker, find a color that you like, copy the hex code here, and then instead of brown, we're gonna edit that field. We're gonna put a hashtag in front of it, and then the hex code. Great. Now let's pop back over to the studio. Next up, we have item fields. Here you can add any number of item fields that will be shown inside the event pop-up when the user clicks on the event. The following field types are available. You have text, rich text, all three headings, email, URL, you can use a button, tag, file, video, audio, image, rating, or divider. So basically all of the similar options that are available to you in say the list block, the table block, list details. So for this, we're gonna show the status as a tag. Additionally, we will show the channel with the tag as well. So you can see here, channels. We'll have the headline be the content headline as shown here. And the sub headline can be of course the sub headline here. We'll also show an image, which will map to this image field here, which is the image that will be used for the social media post. And then lastly, we wanna use a button. So basically what this can do is this can open up either a modal or it can open up a new page that will link to a list details block showing more information about this individual record that the user is looking into. So to do that, you would go add action. You can either choose open page or open modal. Of course, you also have the option to scroll to a section or open external URL. But for this use case, we wanna show more information about each individual record upon clicking. Let's actually choose modal. Now, you will want to choose the content details page, which has already been set up for us within this template. And if you're not as familiar with what this means, I recommend checking out the list details video as we go into greater detail about this. So basically this button is going to open up the content details page and we can choose small, medium, large, or full size pop-up modal. Let's choose large and I'm gonna change the button label to say view more info. All right, let's publish this and see what it looks like. Great, so the conditional filter is working. We are only showing the status as scheduled, as you can see here. Additionally, let's say like for safaris, which is scheduled to post on the 23rd, I wanna quickly see more information. If I click into it, you can see more information about this individual safaris record here. So I'm able to see the name, the status of it, the channels that it will go on to, uh, the heading, the subheading, the image. And then if I click view more info, a modal would pop up and here we go. It gives all the information about that individual record via the list details block. Additionally, we can filter through week view, day view, month view, or we can just look at today. Lastly, let's set up a couple of filters. If we head over to the features tab, and inline filters, let's say like, we want to allow the user to filter by channel. Great, they will automatically generate for us and hit publish. Cool. Now let's quickly create one more calendar below this one that showcases the content due dates and filter that calendar to only show the login users upcoming due dates in a calendar view. So essentially we want to be showcasing this column here that notifies the individual creators 
of their upcoming content due dates. So I'm gonna simply duplicate this calendar block as shown here, and everything is still connected properly. So we wanna keep it connected to content calendar and content pipeline. Now we will want to remove this conditional filter. Remember, we only wanna show the logged in users content only. So let's add a condition that says the creator's email is the logged in users email. Great. Now let's pop over to features. We're gonna rename the title to my upcoming due dates. I'll delete the subtitle and let's allow filtering by status. So we're gonna go back here and allow filtering by status. Again, it'll auto populate for you. Perfect. Additionally, let's add some colors while we're at it. Cool, looks good. All right, next up, we're gonna keep most everything the same. We can remove the search by creator, but we can keep search by campaign and name. The calendar format will remain the same. Let's keep the day of the week Monday for consistency and month view as our default view. The only thing we really need to change is the start and end date, which instead of the posting date is now going to be linked to the specific due date for the content creator. So let's go here, choose due date, and end date is due date, and event color can be linked to color. So let's publish this and take a quick look. Right now in this app, I am logged in as Rin O'Shea. So if I head over to the content calendar as Rin, first we can see, okay, great. This is the calendar that's showing me all of the upcoming planned posts that are ready to go and scheduled to be live on these specific dates. I can also filter by various platforms. Cool. Then I have my separate calendar, my upcoming due dates. Now let's make sure that this worked correctly. So if I'm Rin, then I should be only seeing the content that's been assigned to me. So if we head into this database, we can see Rin has been assigned, Beats Essentials, Poolside Views, UK Villages, and New Employee Announcement. Perfect, I'm seeing Beach Essentials, Poolside Views, New Employee Announcement, and UK Village. Additionally, I can pop into each one and view more information as I see fit. So this is a great way for a content creator to keep track of their upcoming due dates in a calendar format without ever having to access the main database itself. And there you have it, a simple yet powerful calendar block, using it for appointments, events, content calendar, anything you see fit. Let us know in the community how you're using the calendar block, share your software app with us. I'll link to it below in the show notes. See you in the next video.